I hope that everybody's doing really well. So this is a follow-up to the uh, virtual uh, walking tour video that you should have already watched about Oxone Provence. And so I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my study abroad experience with you guys. So if you didn't know already, I studied abroad in June 2012, um, the summer before my senior year of college. And I lived in France, in southern France, Aix-en Provence, um, for six weeks. And I stayed with a host family. So while I was there, I was also uh, attending college um, out there and taking two different classes, one on archaeology, another on some kind of literature, French literature, or something of that sort. Um, I lived with a host family, so that means that a family that was local in Axon Pomos, um, they actually had like a wine store, um, a couple and their two daughters, and then myself and my roommate, uh, who was also in the program, stayed there. The biggest thing that I want to say, and I know that now it's probably a little far in advance to think about, but whether you want to do or major or continue your language, right, in college, like thinking really into the future, whether you're not, even if you're not majoring, or you're not minoring in it, you should study abroad. It is a very cool, unique experience. Um, it, I was there on my own as far as being the only person from NIU. And then there were a lot of other students that were from the University of Texas at Austin. There are actually a lot of other students that were at Harvard. So that was kind of cool. So maybe I met some future uh, bright minds. Um, but a lot of them were not majoring um, in French. We're not minoring in French, just interested in, Fran in, in French and having the opportunity to go explore a new part of the world. So I'm going to recommend that to you now, first and foremost, even if you don't think that you want to continue French and studying abroad, you can study abroad anywhere, obviously like right now traveling and stuff that's not happening, but it could be London, it could be Spain, it could be France, whatever, really worthwhile experience. So I did make a photo book um, with some really amazing pictures that I took while I was in Aix-en-Provence. Um, a lot of really cool fountains, this one is my favorite, um, that are featured around Aix. So let's get on to it. So I spent a summer there and I got a lot of different cool pictures. Um, this is the college that I stayed at, AIU, it's now since changed names. Um, this is the square, some different houses that are around, uh, fresh markets that would be happening on uh, Saturdays or Sundays where you get flowers or fruit, vegetables, all kinds of things. Um, really cool scup sculptures that were featured. And then La Retonde, this one specifically, this fountain it would be a marker of a place that people would meet. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So looking at Aix, um, Aix en Provence, and this is how it's spelled if you were wondering. Um, it's known as Ville d'Eau et Ville d'A. So that means that it's known for two things, being the city of water, so that's why you see a lot of those fountains, and then the city of art. So there was a lot of different um, fountains that were throughout the uh, the city, and you can see here I'm enjoying, a, they had a place that had a pizza slice that was really good um, at a fountain here, um, La Bratons that I already mentioned, and, and then some kind of some cool art and things that I saw. Fun fact about this picture, that is me, um, one of the things that they do for weddings is that they would have weddings in a courthouse, specifically is where you would have to get married, um, even if it's like a fancy wedding, and they would have paper confetti that would be left behind. So these are little paper confetti hearts that I clearly took advantage of for a photo op. But all kinds of art, new art, sculptures, old art, hundreds of years old. Remember, we're in Europe where their history is much longer. Um, lots of really cool sculptures. And then even kind of like modern art, like graffiti would be featured. So while I was in Aix-en-Provence, I wasn't just taking those two classes and then doing nothing. Um, on the weekends, we would have excursions that we would go on. So um, we got to go on little mini excursions to visit other places that were in France. On my own, I went uh, with a group of other people that were studying with me, and we did a weekend in Paris as well. Um, plenty of the people that I was studying abroad with went on other trips, like Italy, not that far from where you are, where we are in southern France. Um, I can't remember if anybody else went to Spain. And then I myself, after I was done with my six weeks, I went to go visit my family in Ireland after as well, because it's kind of pit stop on the way home. So Le Luperon, 
was another place that we got to go. The coolest thing about Europe, the coolest thing about France is that things are old. And that means that there's a lot of really cool history. So Le Le Berron is uh, the home of a Renaissance cancel, uh, castle, Henry Bosco and Albert uh, Camus, which is a very famous um, author, were buried in the, the area. And there was a movie that was filmed in the area called A Year in Provence and Goodyear. Lacoste, um, another really pretty village that we got to go to. Very small. If you remember me talking about uh, sharing my study abroad pictures, I talked about having a picnic. This was when I had that picnic. Um, really, <laughs> the biggest thing that I remember about this is that um, it was very high up that you had to go to get to to see some really cool views and lots of little tiny stairs, medieval style, like tiny scary stairs. Um, but it's La Coste is a beautiful picturesque vi village that was built on the side of a mountain for defense purposes. Along with the view, the town is known for Marquis de Sade, who lived there in the 18th century. So kind of cool. Rouisson. And if you know Rouge, you might realize why this place is called this. We'll look at that really unique um, red, you know, deep red um earth that they have kind of going on there so that's why it's called that it's known for its large deposit of ochre that varied from red to yellow in color and during the 18th century ochre was min, uh, mined for textile industry so it would be used for clothing so they would use this kind of clay whatever dirt use it to dye clothes here's my my favorite plants here um, Monte Carlo was another really cool place that we've gone to and if you're familiar with James Bond I think Casino Royale was in there in the opening scene where they're in that really fancy um, casino is in uh, Monte Carlo so that's the the famous um, uh, casino there and really wealthy area so Monaco which is where Monte Carlo is located is actually its own country and has its own kingdom so they have like their own little monarchy. They got like a prince and and uh, stuff like that. Um, but still within France, but it's on kind of its own very, very wealthy area. So you can see here, what is it? Cartier jewelry store. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, these really fancy cars. I'm not a huge car person, but um, very commonplace, very wealthy. So Monaco was another really cool place. Beautiful uh, ocean views that we got to see this really cool um, baby, huge baby sculpture that was outside of a museum there. It's the second smallest country in the world and has a constitutional mon monarchy, like we talked about. Um, Paris. Okay, so like I said, I only unfortunately got to spend a weekend while I was there, um, in France at that time, uh, but it was a really great experience. Definitely make sure to go to Paris, but my heart still is with X. Uh, a little bit just like different vibes. Personally, I am more of a city person or uh, a country person than a city person. So that's what drove me to X instead of doing it in uh, my study abroad in Paris. But definitely make sure to go to Le Louvre, uh, the big triangle looking thing, um, at museum. Uh, got some fun pictures here. Really beautiful art. Um, you can get lost in that museum. So the Louvre is located in Paris, the most visited visited art museum in the world, home to Mona Lisa, which is a lot smaller than you would think. Um, we also, in Paris, got to go to Montmartre, uh, which is this, this guy right here, and again, steps are involved, but really, really beautiful views. You can see the whole entire city appearance from there, so home to Sacre de Coeur, the original Moulin Rouge, and a great view of the whole entire city, so Moulin Rouge is this one. Original streets of Paris. So some other uh, places that we saw and ventured to um, Notre Dame, which you might have remembered uh, recent in recent years was uh, unfortunately on fire, uh, which is a very famous um, cathedral. Champs Elysees, which is like uh, our equivalent of Michigan Ave, uh, their equivalent of Michigan Avenue. There's lots of different stores and restaurants along here. Arc de Triomphe. So a really famous statue. And then here's some of the people that I studied abroad with. And again, so if Accent Provence is known as the um, city of water and the city of art, Paris is known as the city of light. So I got to go to the Eiffel Tower, which clearly I was very excited about. 
it is one of those experiences um, that if you get to go to for the first time, um, it's larger than life. It's really, it's really cool, and uh, it it's something that you've seen in movies. I feel this way every time I travel somewhere where I have seen movies or TV shows that are filmed there, Vegas and New York especially, where you're walking down these places and you're like, I I've seen this place before, but now I'm really experiencing it in person. Um, some other things that we got to experience, I don't want to keep this, I don't want to have this be too long. Um, at the time that I was there, which was in June, there's a festival called Fête de la Musique, which is pretty much a music festival that the whole entire city participates in all different styles of music. We, there was DJs, there was jazz music, there was classical music, there was rock music, there was everything. Incredible experience, would recommend going during that time. And then, I don't know if you remember, I talked about Les Gorges du Verdon before as well as being one of my favorite places in the world. Um, they are considered the most beautiful canyons in, in Europe and the timing could not have been perfect for that trip because it is stiflingly hot in southern France during the summer. So we got to get some, some water. I mean, look at... You gotta look that up for yourself, but very, very beautiful um, spot. And uh, one of the last weekends that I was there, I got to go to Cassis, which is a beautiful um, beach along the Mediterranean Sea. So I would definitely recommend checking that out as well. Um, overall, the biggest thing that I wanted to say about studying abroad, like I said, um, first of all, it's not cheap. It is expensive. I'm very grateful that at the time, like I said, I've said before, poor college student, that my dad was able to help me out so that I was able to go on that trip. Um, doing it during the summer makes it a little bit more expensive because then you're not able to get as many scholarships for it. Um, but I was trying to do a four-year, really a five-year degree in four years. And when you're going to school to be a teacher, you have to do student teaching and, and all that jazz. So um, if I were to do it again, I would definitely go for a semester or maybe even a year. Um, but I am just glad, really thankful and glad that I had that experience. So like I said, um, put it on your bucket list. You know, when you end up going to school or looking at programs or whatever, but traveling is really one of the most um, eye-opening and rewarding things in my mind that I have done, um, which is hard to think about right now as we are a lot of trips that you guys have had planned. I know trips that I have planned probably aren't going to happen. So it is a little bit of a different reality, but I am thankful for those experiences that I did have that I can think back on, especially with the study abroad experience. I really like this picture that I took, um, especially with the study abroad experience, uh, the connections that I made with the people that I studied abroad with, like I said, I went by myself. I didn't, nobody from my college was going at the same time as me. So I had to meet people new for the, the, uh, meet people for the first time. And, uh, it was a really fun experience, and it's a really great way to break out of your shell, trying something new. Um, very rewarding experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about Accent Provence. Sorry, I went a little bit long. But if you want to follow up with me, or if you have questions or things that you want to know about, please let me know. Au revoir.